As a father of a disabled child, there will be many challenges along the way. And while you can't always remove these challenges, there are small things that you can do to cope with them better. And many of the dads in this group, particularly those with older children, have been able to reflect back and have said that these experiences have actually made them a more resilient and accepting person. So in this final episode, the dads consider what they've learned so far and offer their overall advice. I think you learn a lot about yourself. Um, I know that sounds quite cliche and quite cheesy, but you do learn a lot about yourself um, when you have, you know, children with additional needs, whether it be autism or disability. You learn a lot about yourself. You learn about, you learn that you're more resilient than you thought you were. Uh, you learn that you're able to cope with more than you thought you were. Um, you also learn to be more compassionate. Uh, you learn to be a bit more understanding of, of difference and diversity uh, and the challenges that that people face, um, not, 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 not just related to, you know, your, your own sort of experience of disability, but all sorts of things going on. Um, so you, you do kind of learn some, I would see sort of some quite life skills, really, um, that, that I think stand you in good stead. Um, what I'd like to say uh, to other dads who have just got the diagnosis, um, I know it's daunting, I've been there, um, but things uh, will work okay, you know, uh, try and learn as much as you can about your child's condition and uh, roll with the punches, so to speak, you know, there will be good days, there will be bad days, uh, but at the end, um, I believe it's brought us closer as a family. Accepting the situation, um, trying to recognise that you, you need to make space for yourself and for your, your relationship and for work and everything else. You need to create almost new boundaries on, on what's going on and say, right, we need to set ourselves time to sit and watch a film every week or, you know, just just have some time to make sure that you, you, you do that stuff. I think, I think there's no getting away from it. You know, it's a challenging experience. There's no point in me sitting here and saying it's all rosy because it definitely isn't. And you are going to find that there's, you know, times when you find it really, really difficult. Um, and, you know, I know, I know there's some, you know, quite uh, shocking statistics on um, relationships surviving this, uh, this, this kind of challenge and, and stuff like that. Um, which is why it's super, super important that you you kind of you kind of put your goal to the forefront. You kind of try and understand what it is that you're trying to do, and and always having that at the front of your mind. Because when when you're caught in the middle of of meltdowns and issues, you can lose sight uh, of the sort of bigger picture. Um, so it's always it's always important to kind of reflect on that. Um, and again, the, the main thing is is really good communication with your children with your partners with your family um, learn as much as you possibly can um, about things um, connect definitely connect with other parents that um, are either going through it or have been through it um, I think other parents uh, can be really really uh, invaluable in terms of supporting you and, and helping you kind of make sense of the world um, and letting you know that certain things are actually normal, you know, because um, sometimes you think, oh, it's only it's only our situation where that happens, or it's only my child that does that, and then you talk to another parent, and they'll be like, oh yeah, my child did that two years ago, and it's nothing to worry about, and this is how we overcame it. Things like that, you know, they're far more valuable than you know speaking to medical professionals. It would be um, to to get us involved with whatever they enjoy um, as much as possible um, is really the, the number one tip. So if they're involved in something, you get involved in it. If they want to do something, you do it. Don't sit there and try and watch the telly and let them play on the floor and play a game or try and do something on their own. Get down there, turn the telly off, do it. The housework and all the day-to-day -day jobs, they can get done when everyone's asleep. It's a hard one to sort of say a lot of the time and it's a hard one to listen to. But that advice I got given, which was obviously mourn the child that you thought you were going to have, um, because 
you know, and then basically embrace the one that you've got. Because when you, your wife's pregnant or you've got a child or you know, you're adopting, whatever it may well be, you'll have this idea of your life possibly growing up um, and you want to sort of mimic that for your child. But if that's not going to happen, embrace what you've got and then just sort of uh, proceed and get on with it. <laughs>